Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey through the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2020. And today, in particular, I'd like to focus our attention, if I may, on a title that is given the spine number 469, and it is a film from 1984. It's a title that already exists in the Criterion Collection on DVD, but this year we saw a Blu-ray edition emerge. And this is the film from director Stephen Frears. And it stars John Hurt and Tim Roth and uh, Terrence Stamp and others. It's a very fascinating, dynamic film. The title is The Hit. <laughs> film from 1984. It is written by Peter Prince and it is directed by Stephen Frears and it stars John Hurt and Tim Roth and Lara Del Sol and Terrence Stamp and Fernando Rey and Bill Hunter and others. This is the very fascinating film The Hit. I think at its very narrative essence. The film can be described as being a gangster film in the sense that it involves gangsters and uh, one of which being the character played by Terrence Stamp who is a gangster or perhaps is a former gangster or to perhaps to make it even more specific he was once a member of a gang who then essentially betrayed his fellow gangster cohorts and informing and uh, being a witness uh, against uh, his fellow gang members. And so the, uh, the setup is there for years later. He has been found out. He has been uh, found and the gang have caught up with him. And so uh, hitmen, uh, played by John Hurt and Tim Roth, find him and therein lies the crux of the story which essentially starts from there and what we have is a very interesting blend of gangster film it is also interestingly enough a well-constructed sort of buddy film because we have this collection of social misfits in a way that are together and they are uh, essentially getting to know each other as time passes, as the film progresses. So in an interesting, almost quirky sort of way, it becomes a type of buddy picture. It's also a road movie in the sense that we have characters that are in a car or on the road or uh, on their way to some kind of destination. We kind of have a sense generally of where they're going based on their dialogue and uh, the, the thrust of the plot. But in terms of their stops along the way, it seems to be a very ambiguously drawn road movie. But I think it's ambiguously drawn in a very purposeful way. And it's uh, a kind of road movie whose map is matching the kind of moral ambiguity that the characters seem to have. Also, the, uh, the uncertainty that the characters seem to be facing, not just in terms of their own moral compasses, but also in terms of their own, uh, uh, their, their own sense of identity and existence. And this leads to questions of life and death which I think are at the heart of many of the characters' contemplations as set forth in this film as it's portraying its uh, so-called road movie type of appeal. And so I think in that sense, it's a very fascinatingly constructed road movie. 
It is also a very interesting human drama that also operates sometimes uh, with a sense of humor. It also operates with a sense of of a very uh, very grave seriousness. Uh, there is also a kind of of how shall I put it a um, a, a drama that is about uh, people who are searching for things beyond themselves and uh, what the results of those searches are. And I think it's also a film that is about connections. It's about people who are meeting and who may, might be finding connections, uh, whether those are based on some kind of attraction towards other people, whether it's based on a concept or emotion we call love or whether it's based on the concept of, of, a, of a kind of contemplation or peace with oneself. Whatever the situation may be, depending on the character, I think we're getting a very dynamic blend of uh, ever-evolving sense of human drama uh, that is, I think, uh, involving very interesting and well-delineated and well-portrayed characters uh, forming this, this group that is essentially... Uh, on some kind of path or some kind of journey towards some kind of just destination. So I think from this kind of uh, this kind of film, we can get many different uh, reflections on the and uh, variations on the gangster theme. It is also, I think, going back to that point. It is also a very riveting gangster drama. I mean, there are some wonderful moments of tension and the way that the the uh, the dynamics are played out vis-a-vis uh, -vis the hitmen and also vis-a-vis -vis their uh, so-called targets if you will and the this is also further played out in how violence is depicted there is a very uh, uh, almost a, a poetically subdued way that violence seems to be uh, portrayed, and I think that adds to the overall effect because it makes it even more shocking from a certain perspective. Also, these are characters that are uh, human beings. They are uh, uh, living, breathing, thinking characters, and I think in particular we have interesting dynamics that are created uh, with respect to the character played by John Hurt and also the character played by Terrence Stamp. And so uh, th these these seem to be very interesting uh, approaches uh, with respect to questions about existence and uh, questions about life and ultimately questions about death. And uh, therein I think lies uh, the, the core of what I think uh, adds to the fundamentally uh, ever-evolving sense of dynamism that exists in this very interesting uh, gangster film. Uh, crime drama that is also a human drama. This is the film the hit. And with that, we have this fascinating film that re-emerges in the Criterion Collection here on this Blu-ray. As I mentioned earlier, it did or does exist in the Criterion Collection already as this DVD, which is at spine number 469, so the spine number is the same. The earlier DVD was based on a high-definition digital transfer, whereas the new Blu-ray is purported to be based on a new 2K digital transfer. Uh, which is um, uh, with uh, uh, uncompressed monaural soundtrack. And as far as the supplements go, we have the same supplements that are carried over from this DVD to this new Blu-ray. And so what those are, are first, we have a, a commentary track uh, with director Stephen Frears and also actors John Hurt and Tim Roth and writer Peter Prince and editor Mick Audsley. And so uh, this is from 2009. So it's the commentary track that, as I say, we got in the earlier DVD. It's one of these where uh, the participants are making their comments and uh, it is edited together. And so we have one long continuous uh, commentary track, which I think is, is a very fascinating one. Uh, it's, it's one where we have, for example, uh, director Frears and writer Prince talking about 
uh, certain approaches about this film and how uh, this film seems to be thematically connected with other films in the filmography of Stephen Frears, for example, which is a really great insight, by the way, especially if we know the, the, the great filmography of Stephen Frears. It's really a fascinating trajectory. Uh, and also we have uh, comments by uh, Mick Audsley, the editor, and I think these are very uh, informative and illuminating because they show the, the type of working relationship uh, that was had with uh, director Frears and also uh, the the way in which uh, uh, the, the, the type of filmmaking seemed to be, on the one hand, very much in the capable hands of Stephen Frears on the one hand, but also it seemed to be something where there was a, a group effort involved, including the editor and his insight. And so I think this is a, a very insightful uh, set of comments that is included in this commentary track. Plus we have comments from John Hurt and also comments from Tim Roth. And I really like these comments. They, they really get at the uh, at at uh, the heart of some of the the anecdotal uh, background production information, uh, they go into, uh, for instance, detail about their specific characters and what they might be going through in a given point in the film, um, which I think is very fascinating. For example, John Hurt, when he's talking about his character uh, Braddock, uh, he is mentioning how he might be thinking a certain thing or might be feeling a certain way uh, in a particular scene, uh, which is never spoken out loud in terms of dialogue. And so everything has to be, uh, um, basically, you have to read into it, uh, the kind of reading uh, that uh, one can have as a viewer of the film. Well, John Hurt provides his own reading as to the possible motiva motivations of his character vis-a-vis -vis other characters in the film. And I think this kind of, of insight and interpretation that John Hurt gives is really fascinating and actually changes, potentially anyway, how one looks at his particular character, uh, Braddock. And so uh, this is, I think, uh, one of those things where we can see his character as being Maybe he might seem to be a villain. Maybe he might seem to be much more complicated a character, or complex a character, uh, so as to make him more nuanced and to make his quote-unquote villainy uh, perhaps more uh, understandable or more uh, accessible or perhaps uh, uh, there might be shades of nuance that are involved in terms of his own character motivations, which I, I think makes for very uh, compelling uh, engagement with the film. And so I think that's an example of how the commentary track really operates uh, quite quite uh, beneficially uh, to uh, to anyone who, who might be listening to it. Tim Roth's comments too I think are really great. He, he talks about how he was very much, uh, at the time anyway, he was still a, it was still a somewhat uh, early in his acting career. And so he was talking about how this uh, provided him with a lot of great opportunities to meet uh, other actors and to become even more experienced as a professional actor. He's also talking about certain choices that were made vis-a-vis -vis his own character and how that, uh, that affected his uh, performance. He also talks about certain uh, other performances that he was uh, interacting with. Um, uh, Laura del Sol he speaks about, he also speaks about Fernando Rey, and, uh, and so, uh, again, really, and he's so enthusiastic, and he's very down-to-earth with his comments, and so Tim Roth's co co contributions to this commentary track, I think, are also fantastic to listen to. So, all in all, a great commentary track, and I'm so glad it's carried over from the earlier DVD. And that's not all, because the supplements then continue on with a, uh, an interview uh, from uh, British television, Parkinson One to One. And this is a, an interview uh, from 1988 with Terence Stamp. And it's approximately 36, 37 minutes. Uh, this is a, an interview talking with Terence Stamp directly. And it focuses more or less on Terence Stamp's career uh, through the 1960s and 70s and leading up to uh, the 1980s. And uh, so it's talking about his film career, uh, certain turns that his career took, and the reasons why Terrence Stamp took those turns. 
and what led him back to the uh, the field of acting and cinema and the types of roles that he uh, was uh, what was trying to to engage with in this uh, in this other part of his uh, his acting career leading up to his appearance here where one of the highlights of the show is a discussion of of uh, Oliver Stone's film Wall Street. Uh, so in that sense this comment this uh, this interview with Terence Stamp focuses in on Terence Stamp's career as a whole from his point of view. So in that sense I think it's really great and worthwhile to to check out. Um unfortunately though the the interview doesn't go into uh, much detail at all about Terence Stamp's outlook and view on his work in the Stephen Frears film The Hit. I think the only reference that's made in this particular interview to the film The Hit is uh, a reference made to the fact that Oliver Stone saw The Hit, which made him want to have Terrence Stamp be a part of his film, or something along those lines. And so I think uh, there isn't any room, unfortunately, for uh, even a, a brief commentary from Terrence Stamp about his work on this film. It would have been really fascinating to have an inclusion of that of some kind of discussion from Terrence Stamp about uh, working with Stephen Frears and uh, and the like. But I think overall, uh, we are still getting uh, a great interview with a fascinating figure of cinema uh, that is Terrence Stamp. And so uh, I think it's worth it uh, for that experience. Uh, but if you are looking for some in-depth analysis in the film The Hit, then this is probably not the place that you'd want to go. So, uh, But it is the place you want to go, as I say, if you are interested in a really fun interview with Terrence Stamp. And I think this is a very fun, jovial uh, uh, interview that uh, where Terrence Stamp is really speaking from the heart. So it's worth it for that, that, uh, that experience. So uh, that's the interview uh, that's included. This is also uh, something that was included from the earlier DVD. And then, last but not least, we have a trailer, uh, which is uh, a trailer for the film, approximately two to three minutes. And that's also from the earlier DVD. And that's it for the supplement. So it's it's a pretty light affair, uh, if I do say so myself, in terms of uh, supplements uh, on the disc itself. I think it would have been nice, perhaps, if it were possible to have maybe some additional supplements. Maybe there could have been a, a new contemporary interview, perhaps, with with a participant or crew member of the film or maybe an academic scholar or critic uh, on the film or on the career of Stephen Frears or, or, or something to that effect. That would have been nice to have, but uh, again, uh, this is as a, uh, a straight port as they say from the earlier DVD, that is the uh, th that's the supplement section as far as we're getting for this Blu-ray as well. So it's the same as the earlier DVD. I should say also that the booklet is right here, and I've taken the liberty of uh, uh, taking it out of the disc or the set beforehand or the box beforehand. And so we have the the artwork uh, adorning the. Uh, outer front cover and back cover and we have this uh, this leaflet again it's not a staple booklet but it is a fold out and it is the essay uh, from Graham Fuller called Road to Nowhere um, it's a great essay and I'm very glad it's here it should be noted of course that the DVD had its own booklet which is right here and this was a stapled affair and so it was really nice. Um, although I should say that it was uh, uh, a, a booklet that had the one essay only, which is the same essay, Road to Nowhere, the Graham Fuller essay, which is a great essay, by the way. So it's nice to have that continuity carry over uh, from, the, uh, from the booklet to the leaflet in terms of uh, the contents thereof. Um, the, I should say also, however, that in terms of the earlier DVD booklet, like we have with other Blu-ray upgrades, uh, the uh, the earlier DVDs or earlier versions often had chapter uh, chapter lists or chapter title lists, which have uh, now I understand 
uh, been abandoned. And so we no longer get, get these chapter lists, which means that in current editions or current releases, there are no pages, for instance, in this Blu-ray leaflet devoted to, say, a chapter list like we would have had in the earlier DVD booklet. And we've seen this with other uh, other uh, uh, like um, Blu-ray upgrades or, or re-releases on Blu-ray uh, that have occurred earlier in this year of 2020. Uh, so this isn't anything that is inconsistent with criteria approach, uh, at, at least as far as I understand it. Um, I should also point out that the design is a little bit different. Um, let me just be very clear here. So we have, of course, the, the front cover, which of course, uh, as you can see here, seems to be more or less relying on the same design approach, both in terms of the front cover and in terms of the back cover. I should uh, point out, however, that there are some differences. First of all, if we open the DVD, we can see this inner artwork and the DVD itself with this kind of design. Uh, whereas with the Blu-ray, we have uh, a same inner artwork design, but the Blu-ray itself, the disc itself, has a slightly different design than what we had on the earlier DVD. So that's, that's an interesting uh, little touch right there. Um, and if we go to the booklet, uh, comparisons. Just uh, very briefly, we have here the earlier DVD, which, as I say, is a booklet, so uh, which is uh, different than the now current Blu-rays fold-out. Uh, the front of these uh, appears to be uh, the same or almost exactly the same, but if we go to the backs, uh, this uh, DVD staple booklet has this motif on the back cover, whereas the leaflet fold-out, because of the fold-out nature of it, uh, doesn't have a similar type of, of dot motif adorning the back like we saw on the, uh, on the DVD. Also, the fold-out uh, operates like this. So on one side, we have the essay, and then on the other side, we have uh, the sort of a design motif or the picture motif. And so we have a picture here of Tim Roth, as well as some information about the transfer, special thanks, and, uh, and the like. Whereas in the booklet for the DVD, we didn't have the picture of Tim Roth necessarily. Oh, actually we did. It was right here on one of the pages, but that wasn't it. Uh, we also had pictures here. Uh, this is Terrence Stamp. And uh, we have another picture here, uh, John Hurt. And we have another picture of uh, Terrence Stamp uh, in the uh, um, um, in the back portion of the booklet here as well. So uh, this is to say that some of the uh, the the pictures that are used uh, are uh, are more plentiful uh, in the DVD booklet than we saw in the Blu-ray. Uh, let me just be very clear here that this DVD booklet has this picture, which is also used uh, to a certain extent in the Blu-ray leaflet. Uh, but that's all in terms of uh, what I can see as being the same identical pictures used. Uh, so we get more pictures on the uh, on the DVD booklet, which is my point. Uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, I think uh, maybe uh, I, you know, I'm not sure if if uh, if that is going to be an essential point for every consumer of this particular product or not. Who knows? It could be. But anyway, just for your information. Also, I, I could point out too that there are some. Uh, differences in terms of the menu screen. Uh, I, I think uh, there is uh, um, there is a different menu uh, picture still that's used for the menu screen for the Blu-ray versus the earlier DVD. Uh, but as far as the contents go, I think it's uh, it's as I indicated in terms of the supplements and then also the the transfer information which I in indicated as well. Uh, so this is I think uh, this is going to be uh, a release that perhaps might be considered to be somewhat underwhelming in the sense that the supplements are relatively few, which is the same as what we had in the earlier DVD release. So nothing new is added to this new Blu-ray. And as I say, it would have been really nice to have something new added. But that being said, we are still getting the great Terrence Stamp interview. We are still getting the very great uh, commentary track. And let me return to my earlier comments and say that we are getting this really great film. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a fascinating, uh, uh, contemplative, philosophical gangster film, and so it's it's filled with a lot of 
of uh, complexity and depth and uh, a lot of food for thought. And its approach and style is very nuanced and very almost, uh, uh, almost serene and almost peaceful, even when it's trying to depict these really intense moments. There is a sense of serenity about it, which I think uh, is very in keeping with the type of tone and the storytelling that is at play here. So I think it's overall uh, a, a great film to have. So the, the ultimate benefit to this release, uh, if you're going to get it, is the fact that you'd be, you'd be getting a great film to begin with. So that's the ultimate benefit to this. So, um, But with that, of course, uh, uh, we have the older DVD, but we have this new Blu-ray. And so if you're interested, my friends, if you want to watch a really stellar, fascinatingly constructed gangster film that is a philosophical, contemplative work, then you're going to get it in this great film, uh, Stephen Frears' The Hit. From 1984 at spine number 469. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I really appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. <laughs>